Cups. We give this one a bit of a go a couple of weeks ago, but from one thing and another, it didn't quite work. Windows updates and virus checking and stuff. So I decided I'd just pre record some of it this afternoon. It just makes it easier for you to, um, well, for you to view and for me. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of things how to make paintbrushes and using photoshop libraries you can do all sorts of things in there but this is just a um, very simple photograph of a flower and in fact when i look closely in it on it there's a couple of little aphids and bits and pieces in there but really i should get rid of them but i'm not going to do for this um this demonstration to make a paintbrush first of all i'm going to crop it in a little bit i don't want all this down here i'm only bothered about um, the head of the flower really I mean it's up to you you can leave the stalking if you if you wish I tend to put um, the stalks on with a different paintbrush I'd make another brush separately for that okay I just crop in close just okay that yeah that's not too bad it just makes the next part look a bit easier now what i would do now is i would take my quick selection tool click on the plus sign and just drag it all over the flower and it should select it all use whatever method you prefer for doing this you can just draw over it and use a lasso tool whichever method you prefer for selecting subject and it's selected a bit I don't want so hit the minus and just take it out and then, oops, I missed a bit there go back on the plus sign and it's there I've selected it now if you're using the um, the latest editions of um, Photoshop CC when I actually went on to that quick selection tool, I could then have just click select subject and it probably would have, well it would, it would have just selected all that. So that's fine. What I'm going to do now is I'm just, I'm going to invert it because I'm going to just paint around everything else. There's loads of different ways you can do this. Um, so I need to right click and then select inverse. So that now makes all this outside grey active and not the flower. I'm just going to get a brush tool. Oops. I've got a paintbrush on there that I made last night for doing lens flares, I think it was. Yeah. Why it's better. You just really quickly paint over it. That's it, deselects everything. And that is basically how you make a paintbrush. All you need to do now is go to edit and define brush preset. I'll save it as, I don't know, Monday Flower. Monday Flower 1. Now you'll notice I've not changed anything to black and white, I've just kept the flower as it is and you can see it there already. So if I add a new document, um, I'll do it in white, okay. Choose a colour there, right, pink will do. Use your bracket keys to make your brushes bigger or smaller. If I click there, I've got the flower. I know it's only one colour, but it's there. Now, the colours will always be slightly muted on this because, um, because I didn't change it to black and white. So, if you just save your image as a brush like that, in that format, you will get very muted colours, no matter what colours you choose down here in your colour, colour palette later. So to make the brush more pronounced, we need to change it to black and white. 
Also, I'm just going to look on my app. Click OK. Now you could have a mess around with these and get a bit more detail. You can see in the middle of the flower, by moving the red slider, I'm getting more black and definition in the flower. Now it's more black. I want ignore that it's black. It won't be black when you use paintbrush later. But you just try and get a bit of right. That's better. Where it's black will become colour later. Let me just get rid of that. Let's flatten the image. So I've just right click on that top layer, flatten image. Okay, go to edit again, define brush preset, and call it Monday Flower 2. And click OK. And it says it's exactly the same shape as the coloured brush, but I don't need it now, so I'll get rid of it because I've saved it as a brush. I'm going to go back onto this one. And you can see it's just slightly has more definition because I changed it to black and white. But that's personal preference. If you're after some brushes that are just going to stay fairly muted, you keep it like that. Okay. This again makes a very easy brush. I'm going to do this one a slightly different way. You don't have to cut out or do anything using this method. Right, okay. This is where we start using Photoshop libraries. If you don't see the libraries in your right hand panel, in your layers panel and adjustment panels and all the rest of it here, you need to go to window and make sure libraries is ticked okay and then it will appear here you can there's a preset and it will just be my library and i've already got a few bits and pieces in there you can click the create new library give it a name and you can stuff things in there I made one just called cut out and I just cut a few figures out and I've put them in there so I can easily access those if I want to use them something else I'm going to go back to just my library though right okay I want to make something out of nothing with this so to get it into the library tool here you can see that the plus sign Click the little arrow on the plus sign, then you will get to create from image. It means it's going to create something from this image here. So just click create image. It takes a minute or two to load up. Right, okay, any minute now. There we go. That is that. On here now, you have options. You've got patterns, shapes. Colour themes, well that's getting a bit in depth that, um, you can actually make a gradient too as well. But I'm going to start off with the patterns. So from that single flower you can get all sorts of patterns. There's um, the different shapes and whatnot so along the top there. I quite like this one. You can scale the pattern up and down. You can rotate it. You can see in this bottom window here the image rotating. You can move it around as well. If you just hold your left button down on your mouse, you can drag the image around. And you can get all sorts of nice wallpaper, for want of a better word. But you can do all sorts of things. And these make really good backgrounds and texture overlays. Um, that one 
quite like that. So all you do when you're happy with where you've had a fiddle round with all these, just you just basically you just play with it. You play with all these up here and the scale and the rotation. When you're happy with it, you just click save to CC libraries. And that has saved it. And somewhere in here will be patterns now. Patterns, and you can see that it's actually saving it into patterns at the moment. Now shapes was the next one along. It automatically changes it to black and white, so all you're getting is an outline. You use this detail. Backwards and forwards, and you will get a shape. You can, if you invert it, you will get more black. Now, the more black in a paintbrush is where your colour is going to be. Now, you notice I've not done any cutting out. I've not had to. Quite like that. Now, there's an eraser tool here as well. So, I think that's the size. Dragging that there. So these little specks all over the place. If I use the eraser, I can erase bits that I don't want. And again, you just click Save to CC Libraries. Right. Yeah. It won't let me scroll up there. But anyway, it's there. It's in shapes. Colour themes. You can select a limited palette that you may want to use um, in another image but you like the colours that are in this image so you might only be using a colour palette of say three or four you can I think add I think you can add more colours to it I can't remember how you do that though but anyway if you were, if you wanted a colour palette you just left click on these little circles, drag them around so you've got the colour palette that you like and you just save it again to CC libraries. Now the gradients are really good. You can make your own gradient tool. This is how you can make your own colour gradients. Again, you have these little circles that you can drag around. This is what the gradient at the moment looks like and you've got your colours here. You can increase this up to as many stops as you wish i.e. four gradients means it's choosing four different colours and you can see the four colours here now you can again you can refine the colours so if I wanted um, the yellow to be at the top of the gradient I could move that first circle and I could go yellow with that one the second one I could maybe don't know, go a bit lighter. And then to white and to blue. It really, it, it is, it's just up to you what colours you fancy putting in the gradient. You might not want any yellow in it, you might just want a nice blue to white to blue. Or a touch of yellow. Yeah. I like that one. You just click save to CC. And see, I've got all these gradients here. It's not saving. That shape that we made. It's there. I just get my mouse. Press the left hand key on your mouse and just drag it onto your document and it's there. You can see your handles for moving it. Just move it to wherever, resize it. You don't want it too big, really. And it's there. Crop it. Oops. Don't want that. Want the crop too. Like that. Tight up to it. As I just that it is blank around it, it's, um, you don't need it. Click the tick to OK it. Edit. Define brush preset. 
And that was easy. No cutting out, nothing. You just that is just using the library's tool. I've got a couple of bright colours here now. Oh, that blue. And I'll have a nice pink one. Use your bracket keys. Just press them to make your brush bigger and smaller. I think we'll have that fit to screen so we can see. You click this little square here, a white square with a black paintbrush in it. And it opens up your brush settings palette. First one, brush tip, shape. Make sure that's highlighted. And then spread the spacing out. So you've got gaps in between each one. Shape dynamics. Make sure that it's ticked and it's selected. The size jitter. You can alter the size of the brushes. Um, you can turn them slightly as well. Don't really matter on flowers, but sometimes if it was um, say blades of grass or something of like that, you don't want them all going in the same at the same angle. So you just move that a little bit, scatter them slightly, so they won't just all be in a straight line. It just randomizes them. You can do it on both axes as well. Um, colour dynamics, this is why I put two colours down here. I've slid them all right the way up to 100% because it's going to give me more um, colour choice. And then you can just paint all over. Or you can just dab it. You can do all sorts. Obviously I'd, I'd be doing this on a composite image probably or if I just wanted to add a few extra flowers in the background somewhere to fill in some gaps I would have made a brush out of the flower I was trying to replicate in the image and but you see you've you again you can just cover a blank layer full of all that now you can flatten that and save that as a background and you can use it in something else flatten it go back into the library's tool so if i click the plus button again create from image and then i could go back into patterns here <laughs> rotate it use a different shape And as well as you're rotating it and scaling it, you can move around all these different colours. And you never know, you might find something that you quite like. That you could actually drop onto a plain background of a portrait image. And then just use your blending modes. And it will give you a bit of texture and a bit of colour. I'm not going to save that one, I don't need it. Okay. We'll get rid of that one. That again, you can easily make a paintbrush out of that. You could either use your library tool again, so just click the plus button again, create from image, and then use the shape tool within that. And then once you've got that, open yourself up a plain white document, drag the shape onto the plain white document, and then again, you just go to edit and define brush preset it's as easy as that it really is very easy to do i did um pixel stretching the other day that it wasn't on this image but it was on ve one very similar to this and i just wanted to add, add a little bit more to it i took my rectangle marquee tool and i just basically drew I rectangle the full length down the image and I then when edit copy edit edit copy edit paste it's now come on its own layer if I turn that bottom layer off you can see it's there 
Now I need to click the top tool on the left hand toolbar which is the move tool and I want to stretch that to fill that canvas. If you just stretch it, if you're using CC and you just pull that, it moves it in proportion and I don't want it to do that. So you have to hold the shift key down so you can stretch it first that way and then the other way. And then we go into Restore Polar Coordinates. Rectangles Polar. OK. And then what I didn't do was completely mess that one up. Now, what I should have done. Just hide that for a minute. I should have selected the subject and so I forgot to select it. Just go on the quick selection tool. I'm going to just use select subject for this one. Let Photoshop do the work. Yeah, it's, sele it's selected good enough for this. Right, copy and stuff so she's on her own layer make that polar coordinate layer active again drag that layer over the top the her that I've cut out now you need to zoom in a little bit now put a layer mask on it which is the washing machine symbol there and it will come on in white then you need to get a brush now the flower brush is still selected because that's the last brush that I use. I just want a normal um, soft brush. So that one will do. And then I'm going to, this will now erase that. I put the layer mask on the wrong one. I want a layer mask on this swirly pattern. I want to take it back off to reveal what's underneath. So it won't affect her. Now... I need to take a lot off. I think I need it up to a foot there. So I'm going to take it away from there. And I'm going to paint a bit back in there. So I'll change the brush back to white. That's not bad. Back on the black brush, I'm going to take a lot of this out over here. That's more like it. It's just so easy to do. You can just make backgrounds and add things to an image from something already in your image. I can't remember what they, um, they called it. I think it was um, Pixel pixel stretching or something or other like that this one's called that they do right okay i'm going to make sure that pattern layer is selected then i'm going to go into filter and then click filter gallery and i want to try stained glass reduce that yeah, that gives it a nice pattern. That'll do. Click OK. And you get a nice patterned bit of a background. Now, I could have done the whole lot behind her in that, in that mosaic. That'd look quite nice. Um, I'd reduce your opacity of that right down. It's far too harsh. You only need to add just a little bit. You just add in that little tiny something to the image. You could probably even use your blending modes as well. You might get something from overlay. Overlay is very subtle. That had to increase your um, you fill all the opacity. 
fill sometimes works a bit better than the opacity. I can't remember the reasons why, but it does. So it's just very, very subtle change in the background. Okay, click fit screen so you can see it. So you can barely see it, but it's just added a little something. And then all you do is just right click on your top layer and flatten your image and then you'd save it. And I think that there was about it or that was going to show you.